As part of our 2022 Color of the Year choices, we at the Paint People decided on three of them. The color we're going to talk about today is our bold choice by Sherwin-Williams called Caviar. If you like caviar, whether it's the posh food item or the color, do me a solid and hit that like button so we can talk about it. If you haven't noticed by now, Sherwin-Williams Caviar is essentially black. And while there are countless paint options that feel more like an off black, where there are some noticeable undertones or perhaps differing levels of intensity, caviar comes pretty close to black black. We know this because we can look at its light reflectance value in the details tab on the Sherwin-Williams website. It's three, and what does that mean? Well, I'm sure our channel members know, but for everyone else, a light reflectance value of three means caviar is only reflecting 3% of the light that hits it. So that means 97% of the light just gets sucked into this quite literal black hole. If anything, I would say that caviar has just the slightest whisper of brown. But you won't notice in most cases because of the fact that your lighting conditions will more than likely erase that subtle undertone. Don't even think of it as brown leaning, it's black. But that's pretty much why I ended up picking it. We'll get into some color pairings in just a second, but before we do that, let's talk about black in interior design. It's obviously nothing new as a color. I'm sure all of you have some form of black in your color palette, especially when we go outside of the world of paint. Matte black everything these days, especially when it comes to bathroom fixtures, kitchen hardware, even window frames, and my personal favorite currently, kitchen cabinets. In fact, I've been seeing a transition of metals to matte black and white trim and woodworking and cabinets to black ones. It's a very contrarian movement, but I don't want you to think of Sherwin-Williams caviar as something to put on your cabinet handles. This is a color you could utilize on walls, especially in those areas of your home that can stand out as an accent room. Maybe it's a home theater vibe you're going for, or a really bold office, or even an avant-garde living room. Black walls may sound like a cave, but if you also have very light flooring and furniture and accessories, and of course, your ceiling, that black may not even take up a lot of the visual space so try and expand your horizons a bit. So what about color pairings? This is a big part of the show because not only are we talking about the color in question, we also give you a light, medium, and dark color, as well as an off-white trim color to go alongside it. Well, we're starting with black, so there is a lot of things you can do. There are many directions you can take this in. So just like I've done in the past with white paint colors, I'm just going to give you a series of colors that all work well with one another including caviar. These are not your only choices with caviar, but they are choices. For my light color, I'm going with White Duck, which is a timeless, cozy, warm gray. And what I like about it is it uses both the warmth of grayish, but also adds a touch of earthy brown as well. There's just a hint of it, kind of like there's a hint of it in caviar as well, so that's kind of the mindset here. It's black and a light gray beige, essentially, and they look quite good together. So because we started pretty neutral, my next two colors I wanna go with are more substantial color hues. The mid-tone is a slightly minty fresh green in Valley View. You might have suspected some form of green from me, and this one is essentially a pistachio gelato sage that invigorates the color palette with its whimsical nature. It's a very fun, pleasant color that helps break up the abundance of black and the more monotonous white duck, which then becomes more of a supportive color. Valley View has an LRV of 58, and that keeps it feeling a bit buoyant considering it's a mid-tone. It is at the higher end of the mid-tone values, so that's probably why. This can become the secondary color in this palette, or it can slip into a more tertiary, slight accent role as well depending on your preference. Finally, we have our dark color pairing, which is kind of funny because we are comparing it to a pretty dark color in caviar, but this one is still pretty dark with an LRV of six. The nice thing about it is, especially compared to caviar, this one has an extremely deliberate coloration. It's beautifully rich, it's a burgundy, and it's called Borscht. Now you know that another color I mentioned very recently looks a lot like this one, and that's pretty much what I was going for. Borscht is a suitable alternative to Faro and Ball's Preference Red, although it is a little bit deeper. Full transparency, I think I prefer Preference Red, no pun intended, but if you wanted a similar black and burgundy combination within the Sherman-Williams catalog, 
then I would probably steer you towards borscht because I may or may not be Russian Ukrainian and I'm a bit familiar with this soup automatically making me an expert on this color because that's how it works, right? Finally, let's get to our trim color. Honestly, if caviar is your wall color, you're probably fine to continue it onto your trim and your woodwork as long as you're using the correct trim and woodwork paint. But if you wanted an off-white to go alongside it, I would recommend a color called Snowbound. It's not too bright where the contrast will be extremely distinct against caviar, and it also has a touch of comforting warmth that doesn't veer off into yellow territory. Its warmth is more brown or even a bit red leaning, giving it that almost pearlescent finish. Now that we've talked about the basic and the bold, next up is the breathtaking preference red, so you get ready for that. 